Hello everyone, this is Styles of Styles Reviews, and I have a very different type of video for you today. For those of you who are new here, welcome. Generally, my videos are long-form critiques on video games, analyses, generally leaning towards RPGs as my mainstay. But today I'm actually going to be making a tutorial video for a program my friend and I made to help you play the Boktai Trilogy. For those that don't know, the Boktai games are a series of action stealth RPGs in the Game Boy Advance, but they come with a gimmick. The gimmick being that they have a solar sensor in the back of the cartridge which determines a lot of things in game, from puzzle solutions to how much energy your gun has at any given time. Long story short, the games are virtually unplayable without sunlight, but on emulators that's obviously not going to be there. I initially came up with the idea for this program so I could more accurately play and review the Boktai games while still being able to properly record them. This isn't a one-to-one -one perfect solution, of course. I'm still not getting UV readings and using that to determine how much sunlight is in-game. Instead, we've combined several factors from the time of day, the sun's positioning at that time, the weather, the temperature, all to kind of make a simulated sunlight reading for the game. Now, this program is completely open source, so you guys are free to mess with it however you want. It's free to download. There will be a link in the description. And there is a version for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now, before people get too excited, I do want to point out that this program does not interact directly with the games or emulators in any way. All this does is give you the artificial sun reading. You still have to input it into the game through a different method. And there are a couple of different ways you can do this. There are fan-patched versions of the first three Boktai games, all of which have button combinations you can press to alter the sun's meter. I'm not using those patches. Instead, I'm using RetroArch, which is a common front-end for emulators, for those that don't know, with the MGBA core. Now, this is not a RetroArch tutorial, it's just a tutorial on my program. There are plenty of other tutorials online showing you how you can set up RetroArch if you need to. But I'm using a DualShock 4 controller and I have the L3 button set to lower the sun meter and the R3 button to heighten the sun meter. Let me open up the program here. This is one great Boktai day. Now, we tried to make the program as easy as possible to use. I think it's going to be pretty self-explanatory overall. For people living in the United States, like myself, all you have to do is put in a zip code. Just type a random one in right now. And there we go, it, just like that, we push the generate button and we have our sensor data for the game. Now, by default, this is set to update automatically every five minutes. That way it still has a little bit of variety, which works better with the game than just a constant setting. Every five minutes, a timer will go off if the sun meter has changed. Because there is some RNG, it may not change every five minutes. It'll depend. Now, there is the possibility in the settings to turn this sound off, say you find it annoying, or you have a second monitor you can just keep the program up on so you can view it yourself. We tried to give as many user-friendly options as possible. The zip code solution obviously only works for those in the US, so we also added a longitude and latitude version. All you have to do is click over to the tab, and we actually even have a link that'll show you what your longitude and latitude is if you follow it. You enter that in, and same thing, it's going to give you your sunlight reading for the time. And last but not least, we actually added a manual entry option. Say you don't have internet at the time, you're playing on a laptop or something. You have to estimate the lowest temperature of the day, highest temperature of the day, what the weather condition is, what time it is, all that. But you put it in and once again, it'll give you your readings. Pretty self-explanatory, right? We tried to make it as user-friendly as possible. The only thing that may confuse some people is the addition of the lunar mode, which you will see under the options menu. The game by default is meant to be played during the day because you need sunlight to get through it. But a lot of people don't have that luxury. While you can just generate whatever sunlight you want as if you're playing during the day, we wanted to give another option that sort of keeps the game's authenticity. So the idea with Lunar Mode is to still put in the same details, but it allows sunlight to actually be generated at night, while the program by default does not because there is no sun at night. This was our compromise so people can have a way of playing the game that still feels truer to the original while still being within the limitations of the real world weather. And that's basically it. If you want to know more about the Boktai games, this video is actually launching simultaneously with my review on the first title. Don't want to spoil too much, but I really enjoy it. Obviously, I'd have to to go through this much trouble to make a program for it. If you enjoy the project and want to show your support, 
The best way you can help is by linking to my channel. As I said, I'm putting up my first Boktai review right now, and reviews on Boktai 2, 3, and Lunar Night are all in the works. So it might be worth a look. I really hope you guys enjoy this. I hope it gives you guys another means of enjoying Boktai, a game that is becoming harder and harder to find, and that cartridge failure is becoming more and more likely with. And that's kind of it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you found this useful and not too rambly, given that I went unscripted. And remember to keep the sun always in your heart. Heart.